<laughs> we're going to do a talk here. We are going to do a talk now, everybody. Uh, and we're going to do a talk specifically about um, cluster firewalling, clustering, um, yeah, post firewalling, basically, and uh, network policy. So, whoops. So, I'm Jeff. I'm Justin. He's Justin. And we're basically going to be talking uh, using some technology here. Uh, Talos Linux is going to be our Linux distribution, and we're going to use Omni for some deployment scenarios. And then after that, you know, obviously Kubernetes, that we're all here for Kubernetes things today, and uh, Cilium for the CNI. So let's uh, start. So Justin, I really want to talk about network policy at the conference today. I want a live cluster. I don't want to do this with Docker. I want to do a live cluster. I yeah. Wanna, I'll bring my hardware. Cool. <laughs> So I'm going to put Cilium on it. Okay. So I need to be provisioned in such a way that I can install Cilium, but I don't trust the network here. Right, it's conference Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's sense. conference Wi-Fi. Why would you trust the network here? Yeah. So I really, need, I really need it to be secure, and, but I need to be able to still connect to it. So okay. Well, here's you, what I'll do. I'll give, you, I'll give you the cluster. I'll set up the operating system. So I'll just do the operating system provisioning. Okay. I'm going to turn on the firewall. Okay. Firewall is going to say no, no one can access any ports, right? But I'm going to open up a couple ports. So let's go ahead and look at it, at the patches. I don't have yeah, the I've, screen. I've got you. Uh, if you I, have. I've got Omni. So, so one of the reasons, uh, so the, the Linux distro is completely API driven. So firewall rules are, are also API driven. Um, so you don't have to do IP tables. Everything's NF tables under the hood. And we will walk through what a couple of those look like. Config uh, patches? Yep. So we'll, what we're doing is we're sending a patch. You might want to blow that up for people. That's probably very small. No, I'm just, I set up my <laughs> I set up my terminal. I didn't expect it. So, yeah. So, so uh, go to the cube, 200 cube, and this is the config we set up for creating a or, or starting the OS install with a Kubernetes cluster. And all this is saying is we're not going to install a CNI because I'm the OS administrator, not the Kubernetes administrator, and we're going to disable kube proxy. We don't want that in place because we're I want to do that with Cilium. I want Cilium to take that rollover. Yeah. So we don't. I'm not going to do both of those things. It's just a bare OS install and and hopefully a Kubernetes API. Uh, and then I'm going to set one more patch to allow a couple of ports. Uh, so, like I said, Talos is completely API driven. So, uh, all of our you know, no IP tables commands in place. Um, that first line there is just saying a default network config of block. So, everything's going to be blocked on the local network, literally on the ports, on the like, plug in anything, blocked. Um, the reason this is actually going to work, communicating back as, as an edge device that I'm going to send to you and we're setting up here, is because we have a WireGuard connection uh, that is allowed. So we have a WireGuard connection from this box up to this web console, uh, which is, which is uh, hopefully going to come connect soon. Um, but right now, it's being fun. Um, because conference Wi-Fi, probably. Um, so this is, this is the four node cluster. And I'm just going to set that there so it doesn't cause a fire. Um, and so I'm going to open up, I think it was three ports, right? We're going to open up three ports that are actually allowed on specific networks. The first one here is 6443. That's the Kubernetes API. Everyone knows what that is. And we're only allowing that from the pod subnet. So only pods coming from this 10.244 subnet are going to be able to access the Kubernetes API. No one else um, except for, of course, again, that WireGuard connection we have, which is a VPN into, into, the, inter or into the OS as well. Um, but on the host ports, no one can hit the Kubernetes API. If you're on conference Wi-Fi, you can't get to it. Uh, we're opening up uh, 8472, which is VXLAN tunneling. Do you want to explain that for Cilium? Yeah, so because Cilium, um, out of the box, uh, one of the modes it provides is a, is a VL, VXLAN tunnel mode so that you can talk across the cluster nodes. Um, we can actually layer WireGuard on top of that, but we're not, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to do the tunnel. There's also a native routing mode where you rely on um, your, your network infrastructure to set up uh, the necessary firewalls and stuff. But I want to use tunneling because it's the easiest thing to do right now, and it provides a lot of benefits because we're just basically uh, connecting tunnels between the nodes. You just have to open up this one UDP port, and then all the traffic across the cluster that Cilium understands goes through this tunnel to the other nodes. And the last port we're going to open up was uh, API D, which is, this is how Talos gets configured. We have a, a gRPC API on the OS, which is how it's, it's like your SSH, but it, you send manifest to it like you would to a Kubernetes API, and it configures 
Linux underneath. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. There's no SSH on these. I can't SSH into these nope. boxes. I have to do it via the API. Right, and that's all of these rules, all these firewall rules are being sent to that API and being configured. I'm still trying to figure out why it's not working, though. Because uh, we look at the um, state of the cluster, and it's not connected, right? It is. Scroll down a little bit to the nodes. Is that up there? Yeah. All the way down. Not ready. Um, so I am. Well, do the nodes, is this a not ready because I don't have Cilium on yet, or is this a not ready because they're not ready? You're right. We didn't install a CNI. Right. Uh, so can you hit the API, the Kubernetes API? I can, but how do I do that? Uh, you, you, as a, you're the cluster admin. There's a kubeconfig file. You can download it, okay. and, and okay. then you will be able to access that through that WireGuard tunnel. So I download the kubeconfig. Yep. Set so, that up as your kubeconfig environment. So I should be able, this should be the kubeconfig. So it's going through Omni, right? It's going through the web proxy. Yep. So this should work? Yeah, we'll get OIDC authentication for you uh, through that, and then you're going to hit the Kubernetes API. So if I get nodes, this is gonna work? Yeah. No. Uh, oh, you don't have the plugin OIDC. Do you have crew installed? No, I don't have crew installed. I can do, no, I don't have crew installed. You don't have crew installed? <laughs> okay, well let's install crew real fast. Yeah, let's, let's do that. How search, do, search for kube control crew. There's an OIDC plugin which allows you to get search, those credentials. What do we do? Search Google for crew, uh, okay. cube control crew. There'll be a copy and paste command. Cube. We did rehearse this. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Quick start? Yeah. There'll be a copy and paste. Uh, you need to install it here at the top. Control. Oh, no. Install and set up. Cool, cool. That's the one. That's the one. Run this command. Yep, it'll be fine. It's from the internet. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yo, yo, low. If you're not familiar with cube control binaries or plugins, they are just binaries that exist on your path. They start with cube control and then some other subcommand. Um, you can write them in any language. I write them in Bash all the time uh, to do fun things. And one of them is uh. not working here. It's not valid. Can you run the crew command? I should be called cube control crew, sorry, because it is a, a cube control dash crew. That? See if that works. No. Sweet. So we <laughs> might need to get my video working or, uh, which part failed? Live demos is, is just super fun. Okay, so what I'm gonna try to do here we can show your screen, and I can try to install Cilium. Okay, that'll work. I think so. That'll work, because you have the repo. So, he's gonna be my hands, and I'm gonna show you what we're doing. So, what, what he's doing, we have the, the cube config, right? So, we're I'm gonna- getting it, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're just gonna install Cilium uh, with some Helm values, right? So, this is the Cilium CLI tool, and I'm gonna install 15.5, which was the correct version a month ago, and now 15.6, but it's okay. Um, and the Helm values, um, there's some there um, that we need to talk about. So first thing I'm telling, I'm telling Cilium, I want it to only manage these host devices because I don't want Cilium to take control over the wire guard link that Omni set up or Talos set up. Uh, I want to make sure I'm just controlling uh, the normal uh, input um, for s that services are going to use for ingress, right? I'm actually in enabling a cool feature in Cilium for the host firewall where Cilium can take over host firewall control, so I can set host firewall rules from inside Cilium, which we are hopefully going to be able to show. Um, and then a lot of this is uh, specifics because I'm working with Talos. I need to set specific security context because Talos is actually... Um, 
More secure than your average? Team. More secure than your average run the mill. More secure than kind, right? So uh, I have to set some initial uh, context because Cilium does run as a privilege, David said. It is doing some network activity. And, and so uh, I have to tell Talos, yes, this is okay. I know, I know Cilium is doing that. And the last thing that's sort of uh, noteworthy is I'm telling Cilium to turn on its L2 announcements so I can start up load balancer services and it'll get an IP address and announce them to the local L2 uh, network segment so I can access load balancers without having to use an external um, load balancer uh, IPAM. So I can do all of that inside Cilium because I'm, I, I'm on a local network segment here. So it's, I don't have to reach for, uh, what did you be, I forget the acronym, BGP. I don't have to reach for BGP. I can just do the announcements via uh, these simple L2 segment announcements that Cilium is able to do for me. So. That is where we're at for Cilium install, and have you... No, no, I'm still... Uh, open a ticket, please, and we're going to get to it. Um, I'm having problems port forwarding. Uh, this, is, this is just fantastic. Um, hold on. I do, I do have a backup local Docker Talos cluster if I need to use it. That's why backups exist. Let yes. me try one more time. Thank you. You can try installing uh, Crew one more time, because if you can show this, because I don't know why my video doesn't. One more time. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the last day of the conference, almost last session. This is where it gets exciting. <laughs> I'm going to attempt it again. I don't believe it's going to work, though. Trying to understand why. Oh. What's that? You know, that was my. I definitely it, have. You cannot brew install crew. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fun, um, but I did figure out my problem. Um, cool. I have something already listing on port eight thousand, so I can't do that. Um, Seriously? Try brew install crew. Is it is it cube control crew? Yeah. Just this? Yeah. I know their documentation went back and forth for a long time because they said don't do that. And wow. that's awesome if it works. Okay. Now cube control crew update. It's not in your Path? Hold, please. Oh, yes, you do need those in your path. So we're not connected to the internet. No, but you're on. I'm on the internet. I, I mean, but like my switch isn't. It's not a valid repository. It says that GitHub, it, you could go to that repo, right? Hold, please. What's the, what's the command to find a uh, process that's using a port? PID of? No, it's a LSOF oh, yeah. I TCP colon 8000. So. What's that again? It's still not in the path? You did export. Export and restart my shell? Wait, wait, wait. I, I got a better idea. I got a better idea. Search for cube control OADC. We don't actually need crew. No, no, search for it on Google. Roger, roger. And then just put that in your path. That's it. Cube login. Yeah, that's the plugin. There's a release. We'll get there. And find the Mac binary. It's fine. It's from the internet. It's fine. It's from the internet. My eyes. Are you ARM or AMD? I'm ARM. There it is. See, we're online. We can get it. Yeah. No, I just have to find it. So extract it, throw it somewhere in your path. Hold, please. 
What was it called? And this is what admins deal with uh, <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing stuff at the edge. And when I run the demo too many times, then I'm stealing my own port. Uh, to is that a directory or? No, it's a binary. OK, so rename that. OIDC underscore cube. Move that to your path as cube control dash OIDC underscore login. That is what the plugin's supposed to be called. It can stand. It can work as a standalone binary. But this is a way to get OIDC login for your cube control command. Cube control know, dash OIDC. OIDC what? underscore login. OIDC. Hey, maybe I can type underscore. Too many login. people are looking. It's okay. Uh, and then. I don't have well, no, you got to put it, put that path in front of it. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. We Fact. know how to computer, just not. I know how to computer. I'm just gonna do it. Yolo. Right. Yep. Don't nobody look. I'll hide it. Hold on. There okay. we go. We're good. Hey. Hey, hold on. So I just need to do this now. It's going to try to run that executable. Do you trust it? It's from the internet. It's fine. It's fine. No. It's, it's dying. Yeah. <sighs> so, uh, so we can show your Docker cluster. We can show my Docker cluster. You have to click, like, click with control with command at the same time and show open at least once. Show in folder? Yes. And then you will like authorize this and it will not ask you again. Yeah, because Macs are fun. Control or can't be open because Apple cannot check it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Alt. So it's so hit OK and then you have to command click on it here? Maybe maybe it's Alt click. Well, it's, this is interrupting you because it's trying to run it again. Yeah. The cube control command is trying to run it multiple times, and it's not letting it execute. Then, but keep keep Alt press it and then open something like that. Anyone else? Yeah. Try, try maybe maybe option maybe option the same as with option. That's so small. So yes, try to be helpful. Oh no, thank you. This is not embarrassing at all. There it is. Always open or always. No, no, but it's like always open. allowed. Click open, but with option, option presses. Yeah. So it ran. Maybe try now. It says process. And, I didn't, I didn't and go back and try to run it again. Oh. <gasps> There You're you a are. hero. <laughs> okay, back back to our regularly scheduled programming. I am authenticated against Omni because it asked for OIDC. This is what I fully expected. Hey, the I got my notes <laughs> finally. Yes, they're here and they're not ready because you told me not to install a CNI. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, let's actually do that now. So let me go back. I believe never died on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, so never gonna. It's never. But it's never. Gonna ne come. Never is gonna come back, or not it's gonna come. Ne back. It's never gonna come back. Uh, but it's okay. So let me actually do that Cilium install, and uh, and thankfully um, the Wi-Fi here is fantastic. Yes, I mean, we did uh, pre-pull images, but everything else in this demo has broken. So I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, also failed. Okay, so we still have a cluster here with firewall that no one else can access. We just installed Cilium, so now a CNI is there. So nodes should be ready at some point, right? Yeah, as soon as They're as soon pulling. as as soon as uh, Cilium gets uh, it pulls its images, and it gets installed, uh, the CNI takes over, and um, the nodes go ready. And in fact, I can look at the pods right now. I see Gunna is is running, is ready. Right, so we're so each of the each of the nodes has to run a Cilium agent in the daemon set, and that's going to take over the CNI and and also uh, things. Q but I still have firewall on there. Yeah. So what what do you do next with Cilium? 
Well, what I want to do is I actually don't want to have to deal with the Talos firewall. I want to take control over some things, right? So um, let's, let's see it get, I think we're close. I got two nodes up. Yep. But again, never is never coming back. Yeah. Well, it might come back. No, I got no power. But it's, that's interesting. Um, Never's light is, is dim. It is, it is no longer of this world. <laughs> so, now the network is. What'd you do? I don't know <laughs> what I did. I didn't do, I was just waiting for, I was just waiting for Selim to come up and now, now it's stalled out. Hey, everybody, welcome to. Yeah, so Never's gone. Uh, Gunna, I don't know what Gunna's going to do. <laughs> but we have two notes. We have two notes. Oh, but you can't test the, you can keep going. Keep oh, going with the next step. Oh, I, I, but st I can't get Selim to say it's up yet, which is uh, never happened to me in a real world scenario. I'm restarting Gunna. Because I think it's trying to schedule for, for that node, maybe. Well, I'm. I'm sort of shocked that I can't get. But we, we know we have a CNI, it's running, uh, or at least it's, I don't know where the API is running. The operator, no, the operator's running. No, the operator's running. Let's try to deploy our workload. Okay, so I have a Kate's workload. Get, let me, let me show you the workload, it's just, The just a, a service and a deployment. Oh, but the deployment needs the label. I got to label. We can label it. Yeah, I can yeah, label. We can it. deploy that workload and then we'll label it to match. Let me get the nodes. So label node give you is available. Give you. I always joke that names of machines will determine their behavior, and if we notice, up and give you are the only two that are actually working out for us right now. Firewall. Because Never and Gunna are, are struggling. And this is why people use VMs. <laughs> um, just double checking, give you has been labeled. With a firewall of cilia. Yeah, and that's the label I, was, I used to indicate where I want to put the deployment. So apply the workload. That's fine. Those are errors because we did not right. set a couple things. But we should be able to get that workload now. And it's running. The Death Star is running. And Cilium is running on the two nodes. Get pods. So so now if I get services, right? Death Star is running. I don't, the LB isn't, doesn't have an external IP address because they didn't apply the Cilium LB policy. Right, yet. you do need, so Cilium can handle a load balancer? S yes, Cilium can handle a load balancer because I asked for it to implement the L2 policy feature so I can actually have it give a, uh, a set of IPs to use for services and then uh, apply them to the load balancer. And so that in our local network here will allow us to hit those IP addresses. Cilium will broadcast those on this switch and we can hit those as a load balancer. Yep. But and we still have a firewall, right? Yes. You still, the towel is still a firewall. We haven't changed any of that. The nope. firewall is still there. For the things that are working, the firewall seems to still be working. <laughs> so get pods. I'm gonna get services again. Let's see if that actually took yeah, so Cilium, Cilium is up and running because I actually use a Cilium feature to define an external IP address for that load balancer. Okay. Uh, oh, one other thing. Well, so we can hit that IP? 
Well, should we be able to hit that IP? Oh. The Talos firewall's running. Okay, let me curl that service. If, you, if anyone here has done the Cilium tutorials, you should be familiar with this. Um, I'm just, it's just the Death Star uh, service, request landing. Um, yeah, so I was able to get to that service even though the Talus firewall is up. What did Talus actually do for firewalls? It sets up NFT tables mm -hmm. that are, are setting up to blocking. This was a, a surprising feature uh, that we discovered um, in building this talk that we don't know. We're looking at that one. Let's go from, oh, but you can't, the TIE Fighter's not running, right? Um, TIE Fighter should be running. No, because it doesn't have a node. Oh, right, because it's... Because the, uh, the second node's down. Right. I can, I can fix that and take the affinity away. Fix that, and then we'll... Uh, because we, we planned this for two worker nodes, we only have one. So let me fix the TIE Fighter so we can run on any worker node. Where is my TIE Fighter? But what else do you want? You want Cilium to do firewall rules, is that right? Yeah, because right now we have a service that's exposed, and I didn't really want to expose that to the outside. Yeah. Right? We want, um, we want something that knows about cluster firewall ruling, not just node firewall, not the OS, but the actual, what a Kubernetes cluster is to handle firewall rules. Right, so let me show you, um, by default, uh, I would love to prevent anything from accessing those services. So let me show you a Cilium network policy rule, or no, a cluster-wide network policy rule, that's where I wanna start. So Cilium has a concept of a cluster-wide network policy rule that allows me to select. So what is that, that select? Oh wait, that, sorry, that's the wrong one. That's the right one. No, that was the node, that was the node. This oh. is the external, yeah, I wanna lock down, I wanna lock down all namespaces so that, so that the um, node services by default will be able to be accessible from the outside of the cluster. So Cilium has a concept, these entity concepts, which the OS has no concept of what a cluster is. Doesn't know what's inside or outside the cluster. Kubernetes is just another service, right? So I'm actually going to tell Cilium, hey, for all endpoints and all namespaces, by default, don't allow outside IP addresses, just allow internal policy. And so if I apply this, it should stop that. It should stop that. Because Cilium is then taking over. And this is multiple layers of this. So if you are familiar with firewall rules, IP tables are pretty much all NF tables under the hood these days. Um, but there's also Kubernetes network policy that exists on top of that. And because Cilium, because we don't have the kube proxy, Cilium is handling all of that internal network traffic. And Cilium itself is now saying you're not actually allowed to do that. Right. Um, the Kubernetes network policy has taken over and is blocking that traffic from something outside of the cluster to accessing that service. Right. But, so I just said, don't allow from outside. I'm gonna, but I should be able to get it from the TIE Fighter if the TIE Fighter's up, because it's inside the cluster. Let's see if the TIE Fighter's up. It is running. Yeah, so now I should be able to uh, exec. exec, I don't need a TI, I can just do uh, pod. I can do deployment TIE Fighter, right? And did I spell that right? No, because I can't spell. And then I should be able to curl using the cluster IP or the DNS name, right? So the, it's Death Star. You had a service in there? Yeah, uh, load balancer dot s, s, is it SVC? SVC? SVC, right? Oh, I need, oh, I need a, is it namespace? You don't have to, it'll auto search those. Cool, so I do V1 request landing. And this should work. Of course, Wait, hold on, get services. I wanna make sure I spell it right. Right now? You can WGET which one? From from the from the conference Wi-Fi. Are we have a separate NAT here? Can anyone else? That's amazing. Wait, what? What, I, what local IP do you have? How are you routing to a ten ten? 
No, this is this is great. I love this. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I was like, maybe I shared my Wi-Fi with you at one point, but this is this is natted behind the conference Wi-Fi. Did I miss Death Star LB? Should do without the dots, SVC. That? Yeah. You just believe this just works at some point. Go 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 to the next step. Go show the show the actual. So at this point we have a node firewall at the operating system layer it knows nothing about clusters. We have Kubernetes uh, cluster uh, network policy that Cilium's applying that knows about uh, pods and services and inside and outside of clusters. This last piece of it is actually what I thought was the most interesting piece. So I'm gonna actually, from the namespace, right, this is a more, more akin to a traditional Kubernetes network policy, which is I'm going to tell, I'm gonna actually go, please allow access from outside to port 80 for that. I, I meant to do the Cilium firewall for- Oh, the, the firewall? Yeah, so the- Cilium can actually take over the node firewall um, with all three of them existing together. Kubernetes node policy, Talos as a firewall rule, and Cilium for cluster policy or a cluster- Right, so let's do, let's do, um, this is a different version of a cluster-wide uh, network policy. So instead of, before I did, um, I did an endpoint selector, which basically said, please apply this to things inside the cluster. I can also, in Cilium, go a node selector, and that tells Cilium, please apply this to the host firewall. And what I'm doing here is I'm telling it to please only allow ingress on the host firewall network from everything inside the cluster. But on the host network, not, not anything inside the cluster, right? Because Cilium operates actually the daemon sets actually operate on the host network, right? They are interacting with the host devices, which are on the host network. And so because of that, Cilium can put eBPF programs, it can choose to put eBPF programs that impact the host network too. And this is out of scope for Kubernetes network policy deliberately. If you go and read the scope of like the original Kubernetes network policy, they say host network is out of scope. Yep. And, and, so, and this is installing eBPF programs, which will interrupt the or intercept the packets before NFT table or NF tables. Well, actually, we, I actually don't know if it's before or after. I know they're both. It active. works. They both. They <laughs> both. It, it, in fact, I talked to Duffy about this, and I believe it. We intersect after. Okay. But the the point is, both of them are active. Yeah. So. So as the OS admin, I didn't have to change my host firewall. If Kubernetes all goes away right now, and Cilium goes away, then the light changes. Then, then your pol my policy is still in place. And, and that now took over host firewall for the node itself. Did that, did the light change? Right, yes. so that indicates, because as part of this deployment, we did a little trick, we're actually applying a, another yeah, thing. So Cilium, that, that firewall rule had a, had a Cilium deployment which changes the Changes light. the light. So now, how do we prove to them that the Cilium host firewall is working because it's host network. What's on the host network right now that I could try to access? Cilium agents actually expose a optional health endpoint on the host network. Um, which we did not expose. Which we did not expose. So right now, both Talos and Cilium are both blocking that port. Security and layers. Right, so, <laughs> so now, can you undo the Talos firewall? With a patch? I think you can, right? Is I that can, patch set up? I can, I can set it to accept. So you're just going to undo, and I guess we're on. Or, or, I, can add a, or I can add a port open, but I'm just going to do accept. Right, so he's just going to completely remove the Talos firewall from give you? Well, it's, uh, that is cluster wide, so every node. Oh, okay, so, has, so every node. Now, every node's firewall is off now, or accepting. Uh, right. SE Linux disable. Uh, sort of. <laughs> right, so let me get node. I gotta get the, let's get the IP address again for the node that's running. GiveU has IP address one, dot .142, right? And I know that Cilium has its health endpoint at 4240. So if I do 10, 10, 1, 142, Well, actually, yeah. And 4240 is the port that Cilium agent is saying, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm available. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's the health endpoint you can ping. 
it's still locked down. But I only applied that to that node. But you said you removed the we Talos. We have one node. No, but you also have the control plane. Right? Yes. So if I do this against the control plane now, I get there. And so here's exactly what happened. I applied my Cilium host rule only to the net labeled node. Let me go back over that. And this is actually it's, this is actually why I only applied it to one, so we could show the we could show the differential. Let me show the default. Yeah, default worker. So one of the reasons why I applied that label to that one node, I'm actually matching that label and saying, please apply these rules to every node matching this label. The control plane didn't have that label. So he removed the Talos firewall from both, but I only applied this firewall for Cilium. Obviously, in a real world example, you would want to do this on all the nodes, but the control plane is special. You're gonna have different rules than a worker, because a worker node, I can basically go, do not allow anything, and it's fine, right? Nothing's gonna fall over, but for control plane, you have to be careful, yeah. because you always have to make sure that the, the KAPI is available outside. Um, things like that. So, so uh, I didn't want, <laughs> we were already having so much trouble, I did not want to try that. But, but for this demo, doing the differential sort of makes the pro point. Because the control plane has no fire, host firewall rules right now. Nope. No Talos, no Cilium. So I'm able to get to this endpoint exposed on the host network. But on the one node I labeled and applied that policy to, um, I cannot. It fails. Now, so I can prove I can prove the point. I can actually remove this, right? I can delete this, uh, uh, right? Default worker. Now, if I do this again, I've removed that policy, and now, why is that not working? Don't worry about it. Everything, <laughs> everything else is broken. Yeah. So it could it could just take a second, but um, now. Um, but the, but the point here is that a developer, someone deploying applications, should be able to control some level of firewalling without opening a ticket to the OS admin to say, please open this port for me. Right, well, it depends, right? It depends on what you, how much friction your company wants in that process. Like, obviously, there's some, there are gonna be some orgs who want layers of control, and there are some orgs who want to do sort of line management, but like, let's talk about hats here, right? Cluster-wide network policy is still an admin. It's a cluster admin. It's not the individual developer. But individual developers are starting up services. So, so you still maybe want to have them be able to write policy for their namespace to open sure. up specific services. And that's services. all RBAC above. Yeah. Right, and that's all, that's all RBAC. So, so there's sort of like, you know, there's a hardware administrator who actually provisioned the thing. The person who has traditionally would be SSH access to the node. In this case, it's Omni. Um, it's basically the Talos, Talos API. API. Yep. Is a equivalent to SSH access, which as a cluster admin, I don't necessarily need that or deserve that from a layered standpoint. But, but as a cluster admin, I want to be able to say everything inside the cluster I want to have control over and to have it exposed. So, so the, and, the, and the one place where there's overlap is the host firewall, right? Yep. Who owns the host firewall like in terms of a security? And it's and, and that a lot of that depends on your environment and where you're running it and conference Wi-Fi and how how risky is the environment where it's deployed. Right. And and, and what what do you have beyond the node, right? Yes. Because we haven't even talked about the external controls that a network engineer would have, right. which would be at the what, switch at, level, at the VLAN switch tagging, level. all of those other right. Because in a, in a public cloud, that would be your security groups. I think we are well over time. Okay. Well, I think. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Yes. Time for questions. There's a break. I told you. Uh, so you're missing snacks, but they'll still be up there. Yes, like what I showed was a default by, was a, as soon as I put that cluster-wide network policy in place, I basically 
denied everything else. And, and, and that's, up until 115 and Zillium, you flip from allow to deny as soon as you have a first rule in your namespace. But in 116, they're introducing a configuration switch, which people, it's an option, and people are gonna disagree about whether you should run it, but you can start with a deny everything and first without doing that context switch. So for some people, it's gonna make more sense, but it's a, if you choose it in 116, you can have like deny by default, which means you also have to be careful when rolling things out. You have to actually, you have to put your CRDs in first <laughs> before you actually uh, deploy Cilium. Uh, but it's a great secure by default footprint. And that's, that's one thing we want to show is like, there's a way to do this in stages where you can have multiple pieces and then you're, you know you're doubly secure and then you can pull back after you deployed, right? Uh, the node cluster-wide policy or the one that did the namespaces? The first namespace one. Okay. Yeah, the external lockdown. And this is, honestly, I cribbed this from documentation, right? So this basically, endpoint selector is like, please select everything and ingress, uh, please allow ingress from the cluster. And that is, this is okay to do on a worker node. This is probably not okay to do on a control plane node because you're gonna cut off certain things that you probably should have access to, like the Kubernetes API server. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I didn't get to show the one thing, the Cilium Network, but whatever. That's fine. Yeah. We'll still be around. Any questions, let us know. Thank you.